soothing story time. Aesop's Tales, Part 2 The Dog and the Oyster A dog, used to eating eggs, saw an oyster and opening his mouth to its widest extent, swallowed it down with the utmost relish supposing it to be an egg. Soon afterwards, suffering great pain in his stomach, he said, I deserve all this torment for my folly in thinking that everything round must be an egg. Who acts in haste, repents at leisure. The Wolf and the Shepherds A wolf passing by saw some shepherds in a hut eating for their dinner a haunch of mutton. Approaching them, he said, What a clamour you would raise if I were to do as you are doing. Men are too apt to condemn in others the very things they practice themselves. The Hares and the Frogs The Hares, oppressed with a sense of their own exceeding timidity, and weary of the perpetual alarm to which they were exposed, with one accord, determined to put an end to themselves and their troubles by jumping from a lofty precipice into a deep lake below. As they scampered off in a very numerous body to carry out their resolve, the frogs lying on the banks of the lake heard the noise of their feet and rushed helter-skelter to the deep water for safety. On seeing the rapid disappearance of the frogs, one of the hares cried out to his companions, Stay, my friend. Do not do as you intended, for you now see that other creatures who yet live are more timorous than ourselves. We are encouraged by seeing others that are worse off than ourselves. The Lion and the Boar on a summer day, when the great heat induced a general thirst, a lion and a boar came at the same moment to a small well to drink. They fiercely disputed which of them should drink first, and were soon engaged in the agony of a mortal combat. On their stopping on a sudden to take breath for the fiercer renewal of the strife, they saw some vultures waiting in the distance to feast on the one which should fall first. They at once made up their quarrel, saying, it is better for us to make friends than to become the food of crows or vultures, as will certainly happen if we are disabled. Those who strive are often watched by others who will take advantage 
much of their defeat to benefit themselves. The mischievous dog. A dog used to run up quietly to the heels of those he met and to bite them without notice. His master sometimes suspended a bell above his neck that he might give notice of his presence wherever he went, and sometimes he fastened a chain about his neck, to which was attached a heavy clog, so that he could not be so quick at biting people's heels. The dog grew proud of his bell and clog and went with them all over the marketplace. An old hound said to him, Why do you make such an exhibition of yourself? That bell and clock that you carry are not, believe me, orders of merit, but, on the contrary, marks of disgrace, a public notice to all men to avoid you as an ill-mannered dog. Those who achieve notoriety often mistake it for fame. The Quack Frog A frog once made proclamation to all the beasts that he was a learned physician and able to heal all diseases. A fox asked him, How can you pretend to prescribe for others if you are unable to heal your own lame gait and wrinkled skin? Those who pretend that they can mend others should first mend themselves and then they will be more readily believed. The Ass, the Fox and the Lion The Ass and the Fox, having entered into a partnership together, went out into the forest to hunt. They had not proceeded far when they met a lion. The fox approached the lion and promised to contrive for him the capture of the ass if he would pledge his word that his own life should be spared. On his assuring him that he would not injure him, the fox led the ass into a deep pit and contrived that he should fall into it. The lion, seeing that the ass was secured, immediately clutched the fox and then attacked the ass at his leisure. Traitors must expect treachery. The Wolf and the Sheep A wolf, being sick and maimed, called to a sheep who was passing and asked him to fetch some water from the stream. For, he said, if you will bring me drink, I will find means to provide myself with meat. Yes, said the sheep, if I should bring you the draught, you would doubtless make me provide the meat also. 
hypocritical speeches are easily seen through. The cock and the jewel. A cock scratching for food for himself and his hens found a precious stone on which he said if thy owner had found thee, and not I, he would have taken thee up, and have thee set in thy first estate. But I have found thee for no purpose. I would rather have one barley corn than all the jewels in the world. The two pots. A river carried down in its stream two pots. One made of earthenware and the other of brass. As they floated along on the surface the stream, the earthen pot said to the brass pot, Pray keep at a distance, and do not come near me, for if you touch me ever so slightly, I shall be broken in pieces, and besides, I by no means wish to come near you. Equals make the best friends. The gnat and the lion. A gnat came and said to a lion, I do not the least fear you, nor are you stronger than I am. For in what does your strength consist? You can scratch with your claws and bite with your teeth. So can a woman in her quarrels. I repeat that I am altogether more powerful than you. And if you doubt it, let us fight and see who will conquer. The gnat having sounded his horn, fastened itself upon the lion and stung him on the nostrils. The lion, trying to crush him, tore himself with his claws until he punished himself severely. The gnat thus prevailed over the lion and buzzing about in a song of triumph, flew away. But shortly afterwards, he became entangled in the meshes of a cobweb and was eaten by a spider. He greatly lamented his fate, saying, Woe is me, that I, who can wage war successfully with the hugest beasts, should perish myself from this spider. The widow and her little maidens. A widow woman fond of cleaning, had two little maidens to wait on her. She was in the habit of waking them early in the morning at cockcrow. The maidens, being aggrieved by such excessive labour, resolved to kill the cock who roused their mistress so early. When they had done this, they found that they had
had only prepared for themselves greater troubles, for their mistress, no longer hearing the cock, was unable to tell the time, and so woke them up to their work in the middle of the night. Unlawful acts to escape trials only increase our troubles. The fox and the lion. A fox who had never yet seen a lion, when he fell in with him by a certain chance for the first time in the forest, was so frightened that he was near dying with fear. On his meeting with him for the second time, he was still much alarmed, but not to the same extent as at first. On seeing him the third time, he so increased in boldness that he went up to him and commenced a familiar conversation with him. Acquaintance softens prejudice. End of part two.